Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alhu here with KissAnalog.com. I've got a differential probe here. This is actually one I bought. It's on the bench. It's in my circuit back here. But I got another one. Mix6 sent me their newest or latest uh, differential probe. And I want to tell you the difference between them. And I kind of actually want to explain why you use them and what they're good for. I get a lot of questions about that. Now, I got this big project going on. I've got four different current probes, a couple differential probes. I mean, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a mess. But I'm taking a bunch of readings and all this stuff, okay? So, I want to hook up another differential probe. And I just happen to have one sitting around for a little while that makes Sig sent me. It's really cool they did that. I did a review just recently on the MixSig current probe they sent me, the one I had to repair. And uh, I'll do another follow-up review on that current probe and, and, you know, and the other one they gave me. I mean, man, they have given me two current probes and now a differential probe. Not this one, but the one in the box down here. I'll show you that. Why do you use them? Well, your scope, in this case, my GW has four uh, inputs, right? And each one, each scope probe, has that outer jacket, that shield, which is tied to ground. It's tied to the chassis ground of that scope. They're all shorted together right here on the front end, okay? Well, the third prong on my scope, the power cord, has a you know safety ground on there, and they're all tied to that. So if I'm probing something in the AC power and I want to take some differential reading across, you know, a thermistor or something, something that's floating above ground, and I take that ground strap at the end of my probe and I touch it to, say, one side of the thermistor, I'm going to short that to the earth ground on the AC side. That's not a good thing to do, right? So you got to be careful when you're using your scope, especially when you're using it around AC power that's coming from your the same place your scope's getting power. You don't want to short things out. Also, let's say you're working on something that's battery powered. You still have to be careful because if you can't take a differential reading across like say one battery and then one across another battery because you're gonna short those things out. Again, these guys are all shorted together up here. So you gotta make sure that when you're probing things on your circuit, that each one of those little ground clips is tied to the same voltage potential, right? Well, if you have a differential probe, it does not give you galvanic isolation, meaning uh, DC isolation. If you took an ohmmeter, continuity meter, you'd measure some continuity. It'd be in the mega ohms, but there's something there. But it's high enough impedance that you're not shorting things out in your circuit. You can tie the, the black, you know, the returns, Say if I had four differential probes tied in here and the black probe of each one of those channels, I could connect wherever I wanted in that circuit pretty much. Now, I guess there's potentially some issue if you're high enough voltage or something that, that didn't want mega ohms between those, but usually that's not a problem. So, differential probes are great for that. One of the things with differential probes, because... Uh, People also like to use them around high voltage because they have multipliers of, say, a 500X. So you can measure some high voltage, drop that voltage low enough for your scope to take in. So a lot of differential probes are also like this one, high voltage differential probe. And they do that because it serves two purposes. Hey, now you have isolation between two channels, plus you have isolation from a high voltage. So you can use it in either kind of circuit. Problem is, with high voltage, you know, with that divider in there, you end up with a higher noise floor. And I showed that in an earlier video when I compared the Pentec to the MixSig. This Pentec was the first differential probe I bought for this channel and for my testing. And I got it because I liked how all the cords came disconnected off of the BNC, the, you know, the little clips here where I go to my circuit, the power uh, cable. So everything came off. That was kind of neat. And also the Pentec has three different ranges. Times 20 is really what I wanted. Times 50 and times 200. Because I don't have high voltage. I just want isolation. I just want isolate my grounds. 
and I still have low voltage signals I'm looking at. So the times 20 gives me lower noise floor and better resolution. Well, with this mix sig, this mix sig here, it's a times 50 and times 500. So it has a times 50 like this guy does, but then the next one's times 500. So I can go higher voltage with this, that's great. But the Pentec gave me better resolution, better steps too. And the times 20 was really the guy where I use this mostly. So that was nice, but it was 250 bucks. <laughs> so that, that part wasn't so nice. This guy's like 165, it's under 170 usually, Amazon. I'm, I have links down below. Hey, by the way, that's a free way to help support the channel is to use my links. Um, I get a little something for that. And you know, so anyway, it doesn't cost you anything. It's a free way to help the channel out. Back to this. So this guy here, Mixig came out with another version that had a lower range, okay? And look at these nice boxes the Mixigs come in. You know, they're these nice little plastic boxes. And you see how they come with the little place. Now these are the kind of probes I generally use. I mean, these guys are like your multimeter probes and then, then you got your alligators and they're nice alligators and warranty card and then a little book showing your specs and that pretty simple and they show how to twist the leads together which i do so i did like i said i did a review of this one and the pentec which i'll put below okay what i want to show you today and this is how they ship it i just put in the box so you could see how they ship it so it comes like that and there's actually four models now you know what there were only two and now there's three, but there actually is four. I didn't know about the fourth one, I guess. Um, so, all right, so that's what this one looks like. A little thinner box, a little bit, not, not a lot. Yeah, this one's a little bit bigger and thinner. So, and again, it says high voltage differential probe because they're still good for high voltage, even though this one has, this one like, the Pentec has some lower ranges, okay? Again, the inside of it looks kind of the same. There we go, that's what it looks like with the probe in. So these are uh, nice cases, and I noticed the alligator clips, I think I think the parts have changed. Uh, you know what? It looks like maybe they've upgraded, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm familiar with this, here, let me look. Yeah, they they've changed the uh, parts. See the this old clip. Now, I know I recognize this because I got uh, some of those clamps from another source. I'm trying to remember where I got them. I was looking to see if there's a name on them. I don't see. It says Cat Three, Cat Four. I don't see. Uh, manufacturer's name but you know what I've used these guys before they're a little bit bigger but they're actually they have nice jaws on them I like the way they grip you know because uh, you can get down to the bottom of the tips to grab stuff and then they grab up here you know pretty much all of them grab up here well but sometimes the tips uh, they don't come together really good on some of them but these yeah these look like an upgrade now I also know something on this this guy, normally these guys are just this little flexible kind of silicon tube that there's these long wires that come in and then they just grab your, you know, you grab your lead or whatever you're trying to grab onto. And these go down right flush. I've had them where I'm on a narrow, on a small gauge lead or something and they don't quite grab great enough. Uh, I'm not talking about the Mix Sig specifically. I'm talking about ones I've used with Tektronics and other ones just through my, you know, years. And, and also the ones from Mixig, the, the older ones. But these go right down flush and there's a metal collar that it pulls the things down into. So that looks like a really nice upgrade. Wow, I like that. So, nice probes that come with it. And then this looks like the same physical body as the other one. So 
I'm going to do another follow-up review where I show these guys side by side, and I'll and I'll put the Pintec in the mix too, just so you can see how they all work together. Now, this is the way the mix head comes. The cords are attached, which there's plus you know there's pros and cons with both both ways. Uh, this one gives you a positive soldered connection on the ends instead of a friction fit. So there's some positive things about that and the, the tension relief on them are good now this one has a usb interface for the power but what's nice about this that the pintech didn't give you is it also has a usb on the side so you can which i do is i can couple one to the next i can daisy chain them so i don't it, most scopes have usb connections right so you can power them with your scope but your scope usually doesn't have three or four bns or usbs and so the USB port that you powered up, you know, you, you only have to use one on your scope and then you can daisy chain your probes together with power. And uh, there's the USB cord. So there you go. Okay, so the thing with this one, my other one's times 50 and times 500. This one's times 10 times 100. So this one's even lower than the Pentec. And then the times 100 kind of fits in between the 50 and the 200 on the Pentec. So this one's much better for lower voltage signals. All right? So, yeah. I and that's why this that's why they have two or three in the lineup because each one has different ranges. So this one's the lower voltage application of the three. And the one I have back here is the middle one. And then there's one that has higher ranges and uh Thanks, Mick Sig, for you know giving me a differential probe and for the current probe from last video. So pretty dang awesome. Yeah, you know, that's pretty cool that Mick Sig support my channel like this. Uh, I'm still a pretty small channel, and and they're a nice size company, and uh, you can tell I think the the their products seem to be made from quality. They just, they have the look and feel quality. So I, I was always blown away with the Tektronics probes because uh, being a power guy, when I order a scope, I'd order power, I'd order probes, differential probes. And holy cow, like I think the cheapest one's like a thousand bucks and uh, has lower bandwidth. By the way, the bandwidth on these differential probes is a hundred megahertz. So that covers a lot of things. Covers all my power supply stuff I need. Uh, it has so far anyway. So and, and Mix 6 probes I think are is made just as high in quality as the other probes I've used. And their prices are much better. And I'm not saying that just because they gave me stuff. I mean you guys can do your research yourself. But I'll put links down below. And like I say, use my links if you don't mind. You want to support the channel. Uh, that'd be great. I was going to show you something here, but you know what? All my stuff's connected. I'm going to do another video where I put these uh, probes t to test, and I'll put them all on the same signal, and we'll look at them on the scope and look at the noise floor. The noise floor on this new mix sig is much better than the higher voltage one. Uh, the Pentec is still specced lower. I think it's... Uh, here, let me tell you what the spec is real quick. I'll show you this sheet, actually. I'll just flash the sheet up on the screen, I think. The noise floor on this one in the times 10 position is 15 millivolts RMS. That's pretty low. In comparison, uh, the, the one I have on the bench, the higher voltage of 50X scale is 40 millivolts, okay? So, and, uh, and the Pentec was down around two millivolts. It was really low, actually. So, I, you know, might be another reason Pentec charges more just because they feel like they put a little more effort into filtering or something. Uh, maybe they got better chips in there. I don't know. But using these over the last year, I've had that Pentec and uh, Mixig and using them on multiple projects. I haven't had trouble with either one of them. They both work great. And I don't choose one over the other based on the noise. Uh, I started to in the beginning, but since then... I really haven't noticed the noise floor on the mix sig in, in actual operation. I mean, 50 millivolts or you know whatever RMS. 
when you're looking at signals say five volts or higher that's a very small uh, voltage level you don't see it so um, now maybe if I was looking at the audio input of uh, you know some small signal then maybe I'd notice a little bit more noise there but actually I haven't even you know uh, I should be more careful which probe I put on the input and audio amplifier maybe but so far everything's been good so all right guys hope this was useful and I probably chattered on too long uh, thanks for watching and I'll do a follow-up where I compare them okay this is just kind of a quick show and tell and kind of explain why we use them right. hey guys all right I want to thank all my patrons for uh, supporting me and everybody watching the videos and thanks a lot appreciate it and all the comments are great so keep them coming and we'll see you next video